nice to be in your world headquarters here. It's a, it's a pretty big operation. Well, thank you, my friend. We've been fighting down here in Texas for 25 years. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people think they know Alex Jones, but whenever I press them on it, they all they know is maybe uh, a few selected highlights that are exaggerated or edited in some, um, you know, to make a particular point. You, a guy's on TV for 20 years. You can put together a medley that may not Things be representative. Things like frogs or... Yeah. or, or like, yeah, so is that is that Alex Jones? It is. It's it's things I've done, uh, taken out of context. One of the most famous things is, like, four years ago, they were doing pretrial on a custody battle for my children, which I do have full custody of right now. And the media says I lost my kids. It's just more fake news. But my ex-wife, uh, you know, God love her, uh, she was going to use a clip of me as the Joker from, like, 10 years ago yelling and screaming and saying wild things. And she said, look, he's crazy, he's the Joker. My lawyer said, no, he's playing the part of the Joker, he's being an actor. Well, of course, when I was being the Joker, I was being an actor. This is Alex Jones, what I really say, what I really believe. But if I'm doing satire, and I'm dressed up like Geronimo Frost, the gay frog, then I'm not really a gay frog, that's called satire, a joke. Yeah. Same, same thing with the Joker. Then the media spun it and said, Alex Jones admits He's a performance artist, and it's all an act. But then they never say where I said that. No. When I was doing the Joker part, that was a joke, just like when I was Cobra Commander or something else. So they cherry-pick those things and try to create that deception to say that I'm inauthentic, mm. like Brian Williams or Hillary Clinton or the establishment. So yeah. that's what they're scared of is the populist authenticity. So they're always attacking the authenticity. We're teleprompter-free. I don't have somebody on high, like NBC News or CNN, telling me what the agenda is. We didn't have a pre-discussion before we're doing your show. We didn't have a pre-discussion before you did mine. I said, what are some topics? That was it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this isn't scripted. It's, it is authentic. It is real. Yeah. And 99% and of the time, I'm being deadly serious. If I'm dressed up, again, like the Joker uh, or like uh, a lizard man, it's a joke. Well, and the left never has to explain it. John Stewart... Uh, Bill Maher, these are communicators, but they're entertainers. They're very political, but they tell jokes, and no one says, hey, I saw you on Saturday Night Live, and you played this role. I think there's a double stack. Gavin McInnes, who used to work with The Rebel, the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of Gavin McInnes wannabes on the left, and no one ever says, well, hang on, you can't say certain things because that's too silly or too funny. I think it's only when conservatives strike a chord that gets to people through entertainment, that the left says, whoa, 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 you stay out of our turf. What do you think? You're right, that? the left plays dumb. and goes, oh my gosh, you know, you're really serious. Uh, you believe reptiles around the earth. And I'm like, no, that's David Icke. I did one joke piece with a gore from Star Trek mask on, joking about lizards running things. And they ran that in the national news saying, look, Alex Jones believes lizards run things. And he dressed up like one, so yes. They're deceiving their viewers. They're deceiving their viewers. At least they're trying to by taking things we say in jest out of context. But more and more, I don't really do the comedy stuff anymore. Even though it's fun, I enjoy doing it uh, because they always take it out of context. So now I'm 99% of the time very serious. Our side needs happy warriors, though. I mean, if you're taking on the establishment, if you're taking on the power, you've got to... if there's a risk that you could actually become sour and despair. I think conservatives need to be jokey more. What do you think of that? Oh, I agree. It's just that particular with myself, when I did do the satire bits and the joke bits, they always took them out of context and then misrepresented them. So I kind of cut back on it, but I'm realizing that those memes that went so viral are what brought people to the show yeah. to find out what we're really doing in the main. And so it's a good thing. So, I do intend in 2020, it's just a few days away, to try to bring a lot more of the satire and jokes back in. But I'm going to have disclaimers. You know, uh, we're friends with Tommy Robinson. I know you've interviewed him too. And i he's deplatformed. He used to have a million subscribers on uh, Twitter, a million on Facebook. They very much limited his YouTube page, and they've thrown him in prison twice since I've known him. But even he has not been as deplatformed as you are. He still has a hard to get to YouTube page. He's still, you know, his book, one of his books is still sold on Amazon. 
why are you literally the most deplatformed man in America, more even than Tommy Robinson? Well, the Democrats have, have, have talked about why. They've had congressional hearings in the House and Senate saying Alex Jones is a Russian agent with no proof. I can't face my accusers. We've got to silence him to, quote, save American democracy. That's a quote. What, what, are they, what do they say is the risk? What, is there something in particular? Like we, you mentioned the gay frogs thing, which is sort of funny, and the Joker thing. That's funny. But surely they're not afraid of that. No, what they're afraid of is they say that I got Trump elected, which, which really I didn't. But we helped energize a populist movement mm -hmm. that had a big effect. Uh, and so they saw that as easy to target, set the precedent for censorship, you know, build a straw man on Alex Jones, destroy him, and then everybody else will basically stand by and let us set the precedent. And so that was formulaic. And now in the last two years since that happened, people now really see that it has been systematic where now even Trump would try to run Facebook ads saying we're looking for strong women. And they said, oh, people might be seeing this that aren't women. I mean, we're now entering, uh, you know, the real cult of the universities, the real cult of the left being externalized uh, into the general public. Uh, and, and it's obviously causing a huge backlash. People are rejecting it just to see how nightmarish it is. But for those of us that were deplatformed uh, up front, it's really just to see I told you so. And a, a question of what are we going to do against Islam, radical Orthodox Islam that wants to control speech? and destroy what the West has, has guarded. What do we do about the EU that's authoritarian and the new Soviet Union trying to crush free speech? What do we do about Hollywood joining together with the dinosaur media, the establishment media to try to silence us? What are we going to do? Because the general public is being silenced. And for the first time ever, they have AI algorithms that can block what you say and what you do in live time. Uh, and so total information awareness is becoming total information control. I remember when you were unpersoned. And what strikes me the most about that is that every platform deplatformed you on the same day. Uh, Coordinated. YouTube, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. They even took down your Pinterest, your Instagram, your LinkedIn page, if I'm not mistaken. How did all those purportedly separate companies, you would even call them competitors, how did they all come to the same identical conclusion on the same day well that's really it you know at first tim cook was proud of it apple supposedly biggest company in the world or in the top three depending on which day of the week it is on the stock market he got upset he has these sunday meetings where he gets on the phone with the other tech leaders five or six of them and they made the decision that sunday night that he platformed me the directives went out and my phone started ringing and buzzing. I don't normally wake up, but I, I had left it plugged in over on the over on the you know, counter by the bed, and it was Alex Jones banned off uh, of Facebook. Alex Jones banned off of uh, YouTube. Alex Jones banned off all these other platforms, and it was a concerted cartel effort uh, to silence me, and. Again, people said, oh, my God, it's terrible what's happening to you. I knew that they were just setting the precedence to do that. Later, they tried to deny it. Tim Cook told Vice News that, oh, I, you know, it, it wasn't concerted. I just led with it. But they had admitted earlier that they'd basically concerted it. And then about a year later, when I said that um, it looked like Biden had another stroke and was having trouble speaking about six months ago, they said, well, now you can't say Alex Jones's name unless it's negative or will deplatform you. Hmm. And so that was that AI level control, like Apple saying you can't send out Taiwanese emojis or Hong Kong flags emojis. I mean, that's that level where you can't send out Winnie the Pooh on Chinese servers or you'll get arrested. Yeah. Um, that That's the level of whatever the dictators don't like. Winnie the Pooh, Alex Jones, uh, and, and now they're trying to deplatform the NRA. You know, even Tommy Robinson's face you just have an image of his face on Facebook and it's suspended or taken down. I find that uh, terrifying. What was the express or explicit or official reason? I mean, Facebook said this year, and, and, and they also said you may not show his photo. This is in a press release. But what was the reason they said to you? So you've got, let's say, six or 10 or 12 companies all the same day saying you're out, but they each have slightly different terms of service. 
I would imagine you do slightly different things. They like all said I was a dangerous individual. But did they define that? Did, were you allowed to appeal that? Did you appeal no. that? Did you have any human contact with them? No, they just announced on national news. Did you have like a, a an executive you had ever dealt with? Like, did you talk to a real human? No. Um, years ago, we had like 5 billion views on YouTube. Well, they had like a vice president of YouTube call up and... We had a liaison, and they sent us a little awards and plaques and things, and um, they were trying to, you know, work with us on things. But that was back when they were more libertarian. Yeah. Once Hillary lost, they realized, wow, people are really listening to this, and so the political pressure was put on them to shut us down. And then again, six months ago, documents were released to the Business Insider and others where they had come to Facebook and said, uh, Alex Jones is allowing anti-Semitic post. And Facebook went in because these documents were released. Uh, and it was all these internal managers' discussions um, on this, like, group forum that you know, they had internally. And, and people can go read this online. And they had online, uh, you know, well, private line discussions in those, in those forums about, well, we actually went. This is an article about something totally different. And it has to be 30% of the comments have to be, you know, racist or but whatever. You don't, but you don't produce those comments. Well, what I'm saying, it was comments. So, it was so other Facebook said, we're not going to hold you accountable for comments. Anybody can go put those on there and get you banned. So then somebody leaked those to the press and said, look, Facebook's not, you know, doing anything about all this stuff. They were talking about sub pages that were promoting our stuff. And so I got punished for what comments were. And they, I mean, I, I know it doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to. But it's very 1984. It's very Kafka-esque that they said, okay, we're just going to ban all this content on the thing system-wide, uh, even though that wasn't my page. They were saying I was guilty for a page that wasn't mine, that wasn't even racist or, you know, anti-whatever. Comments in it were, so then by extrapolation, it said I am the highest level dangerous person, uh, and, along with Louis Farrakhan, Paul Joseph Watson, of all people, uh, and Gavin McGinnis. He was also put on that list. And it said also because I interviewed Gavin, who had founded the Proud Boys, it said by giving him a voice, I had given fascist a voice. So like Antifa was writing this. Well, let me let me ask you this. I mean, in the past, I mean, I grew up in Canada, but we heard about the ACLU. And even as a kid, I knew that one of their legal tactics was to defend the Ku Klux Klan. And they would send a lawyer who was Jewish or black to make the point, we don't agree with the Klan, but... We know that we have to fight for free speech in the first ditch because it's easier than the last ditch. You've got the ACLU. You've got Amnesty International, Penn International, Reporters Without Borders. You've got, and you've got conservative public interest law firms too. Did any legal group, did any internet group come to your aid? Basically, no. And, and so what you're having is a capitulation by the supposed liberal establishment who had always celebrated that they were the defenders of free speech. As you said, I may disagree with you 100%, but I'll fight to the death for, for your right to say it. Hmm. What, would, what would they say, the ACLU? I mean, have you had any interactions with civil liberties groups? I mean, I don't watch a lot of your stuff. I, some of it's funny, some is smart, some I agree with, some I don't. So what? None of it comes even close in my own layman's view to be legally problematic, let alone that objectionable. I mean, that's my own view. But what did the ACLU say? Like they defend literal Nazis. Why would they not defend you? Who's a spicy commentator? Because Soros and the left and others have bought off the ACLU on record. And again, you're asking why this happened. It happened because we were popular just like they targeted your system in Canada because it was popular. Uh, and so they wanted it shut down because we were building a pro-America populist movement that was inclusive. Um, I don't care if you're old or young, a man, a woman, black or white. I, I, I'm a conservative, but I don't hate people that are gay. Uh, or I, I just don't want anybody targeting children or, or promoting those lifestyles with children, whether they're heterosexual or homosexual. It's not their place to do that. And so the fact that I had a big tent kind of nationalist, populist, Americana, love affair type show and was just exposing the left's bullying and their trampling. And it was resonating with people all across the country and the world of different stripes who all were agreeing, hey, we 
We like classical liberalism, uh, which again would be called paleoconservatism. I mean, none of these terms mean anything now because they've changed what all the terms mm -hmm. stand for. But we're really dealing with leftist, fascist, authoritarianism. And they were very threatened by us building a multimedia infrastructure that's on radio and commercial TV and that had its own popular websites, which we still have, and that was dominating the trends of the charts. I mean, we were on uh, the uh, app on Apple. We had several apps on there. And it was already the number one news app against CNN and the New York Times. Hmm. It had over 5 million people that had downloaded it. Um, and we had just launched it three or four months, the, the newer app before the banning. And that was left up and went from in the top of the news to trending if we kept growing we would have been number one within a few months, period. Of all apps. Uh, but now, 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 obviously, that's because they had banned us everywhere. Right, right. so that was the it, only place. And so it created this big, huge surge. So they had to even go in and take that away. And then CNN had news articles and talked about uh, Oliver Darcy and the rest of them. Well, Alex Jones, he might be using Facebook's messenger app. And so they went in and looked at them. We weren't using that. So then they wanted to take away private messaging from me. So, so, so really, this is the Chinese social score, the communist Chinese social score coming right down to the ground. They're, they're just bringing it in saying, we're testing it on Laura Loomer and Alex Jones and Gavin McInnes right now. Hmm. You know what, you, you Oliver Darcy, I, I know he's a media uh, critic, but basically you've identified something that I've seen a lot of in the last five years, which is activists who whose goal is deplatform Alex Jones, deplatform Gavin, deplatform Rebel News, but they style themselves as a reporter. But they're really on a mission to censor others. I, I don't even call it journalism. They're anti-journalists. They don't want to report. They don't want to even debate. They want to deplatform, cancel culture. And it was done very strategically. Oliver Darcy and um, Humpty Dumpty guy, uh, <laughs> Brian Stelter, they would talk about me every week on their shows and they went through the YouTube sponsors and someone inside gave them a list of even geo geolocated hundreds of sponsors. And if the Pentagon was running an ad, which I've got a lot of, you know, 16 to 24 year olds listening. I mean, that's a smart place to advertise for the Pentagon. They went and bitched till those Pentagon ads weren't bought. It wasn't even that much money, except they went through every sponsor we had and would call them up and say, we're going to do a story on you supporting Alex Jones, try to hurt your, your brand. So they would pull off YouTube and they got hundreds to pull off. They contacted hundreds. They got a list from somebody internally to do it. So once it was all lined up, they could then call for Alex Jones to be taken down and it would actually happen. So it's really racketeering. Mm -hmm. It's organized crime. Uh, and, and then when I saw Oliver Darcy in the halls of Congress, <coughs> he's a man, he's a reporter, He's in America. He's done this to me. He's bragged about it. He said, I'm a horrible virus that deserves to be taken off everything. And I said, how dare you, you un-American. You're so dangerous. You're such a fascist. Twitter said, well, that's it. They were the last one to ban me. It was like two months after the ban last August. So in, in like October. And uh, they, they, they said he bullied Oliver Darcy. Mm -hmm. So I'd been legitimately stalked mm -hmm. and bullied. And, and really targeted out of the marketplace, uh, you know, something that the communists and the Nazis actually did to their political enemies. And this guy who I catch in the hallway, lined up to go into that meeting, I talked to him, and he won't talk back or respond. And then they deplatformed me off Twitter that I dared confront him. You know, um, one of the things that's most frustrating that Tommy Robinson tells me is that since he's been deplatformed, people can malign him, defame him, and there's just no way for him to fight back. He says at least before, people, when they smeared him, he could take to Twitter and Facebook, and a million of his friends would know the truth about him. Now it's almost like his hands are tied behind his back, he's gagged, and anyone can just walk up to him and flick him, and he doesn't even have a way to fight back. That's what I discovered. And, and again, it's not, I'm not up here complaining. I'm glad you brought up the subject because it's the blueprint of this, of this oppression that's meant for everybody. So it's Alex Jones and Tommy Robinson today. It's you tomorrow. I mean, it, it really does work like that. First they come for this group, then they come for that group. It's a formula 
of the totalitarian tiptoe, but once they get it going, it's a mad rush. And so once they deplatform you, they can then say the most outrageous lies that are 100% not true, and you can't respond, and then it's just a feeding frenzy, and there's many, many examples. And then they rebrand you, and then no one can even find out the truth because the only, the only words out there are those of your critics. That's exactly what's going on. That's why when listeners and viewers out there on the Internet find our old clips, repost them, um, you know, it, pe people get to really see what's gone on and what's happened. And, and what they've done to me has failed. People are smarter than that. They've seen through it, just like the impeachment. People see through that this isn't due process, this is abusive. And they've gone so far that the bullying is, is uh, really evident. But for the millions of Trump supporters and nationalists and patriots that are being blocked offline, that are being shut down, uh, that are being silenced, the little guy is the one that really uh, is uh, losing losing their voice, and it's 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 uh, very very scary. And I mean, stuff like Alex Jones says there's slave colonies on Mars. I never talked about Mars. Didn't talk about slave colonies. Don't believe there's slave colonies. That's 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 other people saying that. That'd be like Art Bell, you know, rest his, rest in peace. Uh, great talk shows, great storyteller. Um, but that's not the case, you know, um, and, 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 but I mean, even bigger lies like Alex Jones loses lawsuit for the book. Nobody died at Sandy hook. I was not in that lawsuit. I'm not, I didn't write that book. I've never read that book. My lawyers have read, I was only a few copies have read it. I'm not in it. Uh, they ran that in the wall street journal. Mm. They ran that in market watch and we called them and said, please retract it. They said, go ahead and sue us. We don't care. Listen, I think it's, so fine. they're allowed yeah. to lie about us. Yeah. I think the eeriest thing that happened to you, from my point of view, is that when your podcasts, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, when you were banned from uploading new podcasts, all right, but they went back historically and deleted everything you had done, your whole portfolio, your whole history, that's straight out of 1984 where- They airbrushed the photo where up. It, yeah, Let's go back, change the historical record, clip out the newspaper headline, glue in a new one, and pretend it never even happened. Like, to me, it's one thing to ban a guy, to punish a guy. That's, that's a trouble in itself. But leave their work there. But to say, I, I, mean, I mean, they don't, here's an example. They don't erase speeches of Stalin or Hitler. They're an example of something bad. They don't, they would let Charlie Manson on NBC News or ABC News to say, you know, it's not going to agree with him. Exactly. They have to erase who I was so they can build the new straw man and they steal your identity. I find that unpersoning the most terrifying. Let me comment on something I, I observed. I, I just came in here today. I mean, so I've never been down here before. And I was looking at it through my own eyes, but also trying to imagine, well, what would someone from CNN or New York Times think? And a, I'd say the first thing they would think is it's, they would say, huh, you're pretty young, racial diversity. Oh, there's an accent, new immigrant. Most people here are younger than you. I'd say average here, age here to my eyes looks like 25. So I think that the stereotype caricature of you is proven wrong just by the people who are here. It looks like, a, like I, I'm not making a big deal out of it, but just I think a lot of the slanders are are unmoored from reality. Who are the people who, who work here and why do they work here? Well, you know, I'm glad you bring that up because we just hire people that want to work hard and are smart and can put up with me. And I don't look at what color they are. Um, I, I don't look at what gender they are. Um, I really look at people that, 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 that just want to do a good job. And you go around liberals, they will have token minorities in people, but literally they are some of the most freaked out, uncomfortable around non-white people you go to the new york times these places they're almost all you know uh white women for whatever reason it's it's like an abode of, of white women ruling everything they're trying to get us all to fight with each other over what religion or you know background we are but yeah um we've got you know you name it um and there's not quotas around here it's who responds to the job uh advertisements and 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 who who is uh you know competent i mean i love savannah hernandez you know she she's smart She's talented. She's also you know, not 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 hard on the eyes, to be on air. And you know, if a, if a woman uh, we put out an ad and it was a blonde chick with blue eyes and whatever, but she, but her attitude is, is what would really matter. You know, I mean, if a woman was a reporter or wanted to be a reporter and she didn't have classic good looks, uh, but she had a great brain, 
Uh, that to me is really cool and, and even sexier than physical looks. We would try to hire her. Uh, so that's really what it comes down to. You know, if liberals, modern leftists had open minds, wanted a job here, um, I would give them one, but they don't. They're constantly twisting things. Well, let me They're ask constantly you trying that. to make things up. They're trying to infiltrate us. One of the things I find hard to do is to find a liberal or a leftist willing to debate. Five years ago, no problem. Uh, in fact, I had everyone wanting to pick a fight with me, intellectually speaking, I mean. But now I find that the left, liberals, don't want to debate. Either they can't or they prefer to cancel and deplatform. Are there liberals of any stature who sit here and go head to head with you or do they deplatform you too they always hide and and, and they have an arrogance oh but, i don't i don't i don't give your evil any attention we're going to deplatform you i mean two years ago when this was starting in earnest i said i'm being deplatformed they go jones claims there's a thing called deplatforming that's what they were doing behind the scenes is what their statements and documents were but the media it was even trying to say jones isn't being deplatformed mm. Okay, while it was happening, they were trying to have this gaslit double speak, and this doesn't make sense to logical viewers. It's not, it doesn't make sense. They want to control reality, like saying a man can have a baby, um, or saying a man needs to have a cervix exam, and the nurse says, sir, you have a large male genitals, and she gets fired or whatever in England, because she didn't well, do... It's the know, Canadian know. story of Jonathan Yaniv. Hey, i got a question for you. Yeah, wax I mean, my balls. Yeah. Uh, that's Canada's famous uh, uh, for that. Um, what do you think would happen if we put this... You know, we, we record this for our paywall viewers, and we put that up on a private video player. What do you think would happen if we put this up on YouTube? I mean, I'm... They, I, they tried to put out the... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm here to interview you. I mean, I, I, I'm sympathetic to you. I, I enjoy what I've seen of you. I don't work for you. Um, you should be allowed to interview who you want. Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, 60 Minutes used to go interview Edie Amin. Yeah, I mean, I'm interviewing you because I think you're interesting and I think our people want to hear about it. And I'm not asking you gotcha questions. I'm asking you legit questions. I'm give, I'm letting you answer. Do you but you're think, not supposed to give me a voice. Well, do you think YouTube is going to shut this down? Do you think I'm going to get some sort of a strike if I put this on YouTube? They tried to put out the illusion and with some of their partners when they first were banning me a few years ago, they'd go, people are getting banned for even having Alex Jones on or even playing clips of him. And that's not, that's not true. It's our channel. It's, 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 it's if InfoWars tries to put up new content. And the head of YouTube a few months ago said, everyone's invited back. We're all for free speech. Owen Schroyer goes, oh, really? He just got banned from being associated with me. He goes, great, we put a new channel up, banned in four well, hours. Have you, tried, have you tried to go in the front door? I, I don't mean physically, but maybe physically. Have you tried to say, all right, you know, you're still figuring things out. Let's give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm here to, I'm here to come in the front door. Yes, we've sent them emails. We've called them, no response back. Um, I mean, they have... Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe I'm not familiar enough with your body of work. Maybe there's something that's utterly unacceptable. Now, what's going on is I, it, yeah, it, was, it, it, was, it was getting Trump elected and having Trump on the show. And they wanted, again, demonize me, create a straw man. Once I fell, they believed everybody else would So accept. they just needed someone for two minutes of hate, to use that analogy from 1984. Yeah, they needed that is Goldstein. Exactly, I was Emmanuel Goldstein. To, to set the precedent. To Project set. onto you all the sins. You're the scapegoat. Whatever is wrong, you did it. That's exactly what they did. And they just piled them on and piled them on and piled them on to build me up as this demon. And then they, once people didn't defend me, the precedent was set. And then she comes out and goes, oh, there's free speech. And then Owen goes and puts up his channel. David Knight, very genteel, very smart, an engineer. He had millions and millions of subscribers on iTunes. They took away his podcast. Owen hundreds of millions of views on his YouTube channel. They took it away when I got banned. The media would then go, wait, his other hosts have still got shows. Mm. And so to answer your question, um, no, they've not been taking down people that have interviewed me. Um, and they wanted to try to set that precedent, but they understand that's really too far to then say other people aren't allowed to go interview somebody. Well, we'll see because I think we'll put this up on the YouTubes. I, I know you got to go. I'm, I appreciate your time. Let me ask you three quick snappers here. Um, what's the main thing that people aren't allowed to talk about these days? I think it's how there's corporate and governmental networks that use uh, 
pedophilia as a way to blackmail and control the fact that that's one of the main systems in the Vatican and other other powerful organizations that, that that's really allowed cults to take over. It sounds so we, like you're alluding to Epstein. Yes, Jeffrey yes. Epstein. Epstein is one kind of iceberg in, a, in an iceberg field. Did you feel vindicated by that whole story? The fact that he was finally arrested and that everyone said he's going to be killed. He's going to be killed. He's going to be killed. And he was killed. Yeah, and I mean, I think you're right. That's the biggest story of 2019 because it's a huge awakening left and right coming together and saying Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. And that's just a symbol of we don't buy the official story and it's okay to ask questions. And they're trying to criminalize asking questions and not believing the official story. Even if you're wrong sometimes, you have a right to ask those questions uh, because we've been lied to so many times and that's really cherished and protected in, in Western civilization and should be. Uh, and that's part of due process as well, just in the court of public opinion uh, to be able to do that. So you're absolutely right about that. I got a lot of questions on that, but I know time I got is time to do it. Uh, well, I was, I was going to say the fact that Prince Andrew was linked to that and had a disastrous alibi interview that was so bad, the queen basically said, honey, you're not doing any more events. You're stepping down. That's out of something that five years ago would have been called a conspiracy theory, and yet it's happening before our eyes. I, I think that's the great rebuke of the information controllers. I think what's happening there, and I don't even think we've seen the, well, that's the right. iceberg. I don't want to say I'm an eternal optimist. I'm a realist. I'm very optimistic. We're facing AI, a lot of tyranny, but people deep down have been asleep. Now they're awake. They're not intimidated. The attempt to intimidate everybody may work on some people, but not most people. And I think it's backfiring. And I think that uh, the whole corrupt system or the corrupt elements of the system that have been trying to use hidden corruption to take over the whole system, I think they're on their heels. Here's a question I ask myself. Who is a role model for you? Who do you admire? Who do you say, I want to do that? I mean, I think Tommy Robinson I think what you've done uh, independently is, 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 is a great role model. I think what Donald Trump's done, uh, and I think many other trailblazers, I think these women in Iran in places that you know are up there really taking their hijabs off and, and saying they want freedom, I think that's real empowerment. I admire those folks. I admire the uh, investigative journalists that go undercover with Planned Parenthood, selling baby parts and advertising that they're selling living, you know, beating hearts. I mean, I think that's real undercover journalism, Project Veritas. Uh, what James O'Keefe is doing and his team is just real investigative journalism par excellent is bringing us back from the dark ages uh, of corporate media uh, kind of ending that. Uh, and, and just InfoWars and my crew and Owen Schroyer and all the people here, they're, they're my heroes. Uh, how steadfastly they focus, they work so damn hard. We had some people here like 14 hours yesterday. Uh, they're just really dedicated. And so getting to meet the general public who has that light in their eyes. They could be old, they could be young, they could be black, they could be white, they could be Christian, they could be Jewish, uh, they could be Buddhist. But when they're into freedom, they have that light about them and that energy and they're well-spoken and they're, that they've got things going on and they're engaged with the universe. And then you get around leftist and they're hateful and they're mean like, uh, you know, the poor little victim girl they're using for global warming propaganda. Uh, and, and, and they're just so uh, obviously on the dark side uh, that you're like, thank God, that this has been a rough journey, but I've gotten to meet so many really cool people who are unified in our humanity and the fact that we do want a social contract of living in a free society. And that means the right of free speech. That means the right of self-defense. That means the right of religion or not to practice it. That means uh, the uh, you know right to, 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 to stand your ground and the right to travel and, 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 and the right to respect others and have yourself respected. And the left doesn't respect that now they are the plague. They are the problem. And I love the fact that they are so scared of me that they've spent more time trying to shut down what we represent than everybody else. And so uh, I wear it as a badge of honor, but also it makes me work even harder knowing they're trying to silence me. I mean, quite frankly, I've been doing this 25 years. I bust my ass and you can only go full throttle or stop. There's no milk, you know, warm, you know, milk toast in the middle. Uh, and so I wish that uh, I didn't have to be so fired up in this, but I've got to do it, and I enjoy it. Uh, but I, 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 I wish that things weren't so dire that I would have to be on fire like this opposing it. Last question. Do you think China will become more like America, or do you think America will be more like China? 
the way you boil things down, much better than I do pontificating for five minutes on every question, it's amazing. Um, Levant is a savant. <laughs> but seriously, that's the big question of our age. Are we going to be the Chinese global dehumanization Borg evil of the communist Chinese oppressing those great people? Or are we going to go with the greater ideals of the Renaissance and Americana and the West uh, and uh, the roots uh, of Western civilization that are Judeo-Christian systems of, 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 of due process right from the Old Testament, right through to Magna Carta, right through to 1776? I mean, that is the Renaissance all flowing through uh, you know, out of Christianity and and, 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 and and what happened in Europe and just all of that, those are the two paths we're going down. The, the Chinese communist legalism, uh, which is, again, technocracy, or making it about the individual. And those are the two big tidal forces of globalism versus nationalism, uh, freedom versus slavery. And, and that is the big contest of the future. We're at the exact middle of the crossroads right now. Hmm. Well, Alex Jones, thank you for your time today. Keep fighting for freedom, my friend. Thank you. We're at band.video. Uh, the videos are all free, the live shows. We hope people sp spread those links. We hope they spread yours. It's real activism. You are the resistance, and, and your human intelligence promoting things is amazing. Infowars.com forward slash show. Infowars lives. Thanks to all of you, and thanks for having me on. Right on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.